question. My name is Ricky McLean. Uh, I am a structural engineer with Woodworks, and I'll explain Woodworks in just a second. Uh, we are going to be going through some structural design steps, processes, examples for modern mass timber construction. We'll talk about products like cross laminated timber, nail laminated timber, glue lamb, um, and subjects such as that. We will have a fair amount of information to get through, but I definitely welcome your questions and look forward to addressing those in the, the Q&A sessions that we'll have. So this is the course description that you likely read through when you decided to attend today's session, as well as our four learning objectives. But these are the main topics we're going to cover. Uh, first, we'll take a, kind of a 30,000 foot view as far as what does a mass timber building even look like in terms of the structural systems that are used. And then once we get past that, we'll dive more deeply into the specific products. Um, looking mostly at gravity framing design, although at the end we will talk a little bit of, about lateral. Uh, one of the questions that comes up often in exposed mass timber buildings is fire design. And I think probably most of you have seen an increased level of the structural engineer's role in fire design of buildings. So we will touch on that. We'll t touch uh, some on connections and structural design of connections in modern timber structures. And then as I mentioned, we'll wrap up with a brief uh, look into lateral design considerations for modern mass timber buildings. So if, if anybody's not familiar with what mass timber is, it's in a way an homage looking back at traditional heavy timber construction. Now the difference in my mind between mass timber construction and heavy timber construction is that heavy timber construction was generally large cross sections of timber, of wood, you know, like a solid 10 by 10 column, but that was generally pulled from one, one tree, one log, right? There was a solid cross section. However, mass timber can create similar large cross-sectional sizes, but it's generally doing so with a number of smaller individual laminations or pieces that are either adhered or nailed or screwed together. So instead of your solid 10 by 14 beam, you know, it's a glue laminated timber 10 by 14 beam. Um, instead of, you know, the floor deck, generally that would be more of a tongue and groove decking system. Now we're looking at products like panelized cross laminated timber and nail laminated timber. So first, briefly to look at the systems that are generally used in a modern mass timber building. These are the four, I think, probably most commonly used gravity framing styles. So the post and beam frame, two-way panel deck, hybrid systems utilizing a combination of heavy uh, mass timber and light frame, and then also a honeycomb system. So first, let's look at the post and beam system. This is by far the most common in any type of mass timber construction taking place in the US and North America today. So this, these are just some examples of modern mass timber buildings in the US using this post and beam style construction. This is the T3 building. It's a seven story office building in Minneapolis. And you can see the structural grid is very simple. It consists of these nice glue laminated timber columns and glue laminated timber beams. That's that very simplistic post and beam frame system. Another example, this is a four-story office building out in Portland, Oregon. Um, similar concept here. Uh, you can see the grid is a, a little bit closer spacing, and so some, some sub-purlins that you see going this direction. The reason for that was simply that this is using a tongue and groove decking, so the floor system isn't able to span as far as it was for the nail laminated timber T3 example we just looked at. The UMass design building, four-story uh, lab classroom office, facility at the University of Massachusetts Amherst campus. Similar concept, glue lamb columns and beams. And in this case, it's a cross laminated timber floor deck. And we'll get into cross laminated timber as well as nail laminated timber uh, more in the next section after our first break. And just a final example, similar concept. You can see the common theme here, glue lamb columns and beams is, again, by far that most common post and beam style construction. Next example, framing system or framing style is what's called a two-way panel deck. And the concept here, the difference here between that and the systems we just looked at, is that in these situations, that's actually relying on a, a timber panel or a timber slab, if you want to think of it that, that way, spanning in both directions. So some concrete structures will do this, where they have two-way spans, you know, slabs spanning in both directions. All of the examples we just looked at for the post and beam style construction, that was a one-way span where that CLT or NLT floor panel was spanning from beam to beam just in one direction. Well, cross laminated timber, uh, as we'll see in just a minute, has cross laminations of wood and it does have some capability to span both directions. 
So this project here, it's a Brock Commons project. It's a student housing residence on the University of British Columbia campus. And you notice looking down the grid of this structure, you see that there is, there's, no, there's not a single beam essentially on this project. It's point supported so that each cross laminated timber panel is only supported at these isolated locations at the corners. So that CLT is spanning both directions.